Um, so this, let's talk. Let's talk about the uh, individual defendant, James Cleveland. Do you know James Cleveland by sight? Yes. And would you describe what uh, Mr. Cleveland has done to you over the past several months? Well, Mr. Cleveland has followed me around the last couple of months. You know. Well, when I say the last couple of months, I mean from December, uh, December, December okay. through. Uh, um, well, August. he's followed me around. He's, um, he has taunted me. He has, even if I cross the street, he crosses with me. He, he continually chatters and talks about anything and everything, and just just to try to refuse me. Now, when you say that Mr. Cleveland has taunted you, tell the court what do you mean by that? A, a, a particular instant, you mean? Yeah, or, or activity or instance. Activities or words? Well, uh, I, I, can, I remember one time pretty well that uh, we were on Summer Street here and he started um, taunting me about being poor Linda stealing from the citizens of Keene for all these years, poor Linda. And he went on and on with it. When you, when you say in a close proximity to you, uh, I mean, if you were to stretch your arms out, um, would, would you be able to touch these defendants? At times, yes. And at times, were the defendants even closer to you than uh, one foot away? Yes. Have you told the, uh, Mr. Cleveland to back off and get out of your face or words to that effect? No, yeah, don't talk to me. Stay away from me. Then how many times have you told Mr. Cleveland to stay away from you, get back, or words to that effect? I believe I, I just told him the once. And did he get back? Did he get out of your face? Uh, it was some days later, but it was the same thing again. It was the same uh, activities on his part again. What are the same activities? You have the to talk, The talking and the following behind and videotaping or in front of or walking by. Would you recognize that people have rights to videotape people, uh, public employees? Objection. What's the relevance? Well, the relevance is I want to establish, make an offer of proof that even the uh, employees recognize that they're, right, that they're municipal employees and that individuals have a right to protest and videotape and say what they want within the boundaries of the law. So uh, my point here is to uh, establish through evidence that these three folks are not against First Amendment rights. Your Honor, whether these people are against First Amendment rights or not against First Amendment rights is no bearing on the issue this court has to address. It's not, again, it's not a personal issue. It's not their political philosophy. I think the, uh, I take it the that the question would be yes, that they for the limited purpose, I, I agree, it's a marginal, if any, developments, but I'll allow. So, Lynn, with regard to individual rights, do you recognize that people can, as a public employee, videotape you? Yes. And you, you recognize that people don't have to agree with, you know, working for the government or the city or whomever? Yes. What are you asking this court to do, Lynn? Basically, I'm, I'm helping, I'm asking for some assistance to help me be able to do my job like I should be doing my job without being pursued and continually trying to uh, keep me unfocused or trying to make me, you know, leave altogether. I, I need your help uh, to let me do my job without having to deal like this on a regular basis. When you say regular basis, is it every day? It's on a daily basis. Have you, um, when you say do your job, have you, from your perspective, 
have you been interfered with doing your job by Mr. Cleveland? Yes. Have you been interfered with by Garrett Ian? Yes. Can you point out Garrett Ian, please? Garrett Ian is wearing a black polo shirt. Do you need more rec recognition for the record for that, Judge? Chair Meyer, do you dispute that the witness has identified Mr. Ian? Have you, from your perspective, been interfered in doing your job by Ian Bernard? Yes. Would you point out Mr. Bernard, please? He's wearing the maroon polo shirt. I go by Ian Freeman. Ian Bernard Freeman? Ian Freeman. Freeman? And how about the Graham Colson? Has Graham Colson interfered with you in performing your jobs from your perspective? Yes. Would you point out Mr. Colson? Mr. Colson is sitting by here, Ian, with the sunglasses. And how about um, Kate Ager? Has Kate interfered with you doing your job since December? Yes. Uh, and how about Kate? Would you point out Kate? She's sitting beside uh, Mr. Bernard. Freeman. Mr. Freeman's name uh, has been he's been in other court pleadings that that, that is his name and, and I take it he's, he's objecting to the, to the reference. I think ma'am she would refer to Mr. Freeman by his name. And how about Pete Ayer? Does, has Pete Ayer from your perspective interfered with you in doing your job? No. And I think you've already recognized, uh, pointed him out to the court. Yes, it's very much for sure. Now, but for Mr. Ayer, Pete Ayer, Peter Ayer, um, have the five individuals from your perspective worked together to interfere with you doing your job? That's correct, yes. Describe it. How so? Working together, normally. Um, uh, Garrett and Graham would team up, and earlier on it would be Kate. And I can't remember the other. I believe it was, it was Kate and Graham earlier on. It's been months since I've seen her. It's been months since you've seen Kate there? Yeah, weeks. <laughs> <laughs> How about um, uh, the video, the videotaping that you described? Would you describe for the judge how close individual defendants have gotten next to you or near you with regard to the use of the video? Not that close. Well, I'm asking how close. Well, from here where the judge sits. Okay, so eight feet or so, or ten feet? At times, it varies. Okay. And uh, who have you seen videotaping? All of them at one point, either with a camera or a phone-type device. And have any uh, derogatory comments been made to you, such as thief or stealing or anything in that regard? Yes. Your Honor, we're looking back to our legacy unidentified, unattributed uh, questions not limited to comments made by defendants. Sustained. Describe for the court um, when, who has made uh, any derogatory comments to you by name of the individual and the generic derogatory remarks. Um, Mr. Cleveland is accusing of being a thief and Graham Colson and I've been stealing from people. And that's in the context of doing your job, checking meters, etc. Lynn, from your perspective, has this taken on a personal attack on you? You feel personally attacked by what they've been doing? Yeah, 
I do. Why so? Because I I know it's uh it's it's become personal because I become very unfocused in, in what I'm supposed to be doing. I, I feel like I'm being moved around, that I can't go out here and do the job I'm supposed to do in just trying to avoid them, to stay away, to get away from it. Um, that's been an interference of more or less running or cat and mouse kind of game. Uh, that, that, that's been a, a problem. Or mm -hmm. waiting for someone to show up, that awful anticipation of, you know, here I am, I'm having a great morning, and then boom, there's someone there. And it all starts. Now, <coughs> this cat and mouse reference that you just made, would you describe for the court what you mean by making arrangements for cat and mouse? Well, meaning if I see someone that I'm going to, if I had a Pacific idea of what I was going to be doing, which is I'm kind of an organized person like that, I would have to change. I would change my mind just to avoid having to come across or be around them. So I would change directions, in other words, cross the street, go to a whole different area, whatever I could. Remember, I'm on foot, so it's, I mean, it's limited success at doing that. Limited success, did you say? Yes, because I am on foot. But I have had times, too, when I'm driving that uh, in the vehicle that I use for work, where they have, where they have followed me in their vehicles. And um, have they followed you on with bicycles as well? Oh, yes. Drive, please. Well. Who have you seen on bicycles first? Basically, um, Mr. Ian has done that while he's videotaping, and he sort of hears that he's videotaping. Um, it, it's 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 tough because he'll be behind and then in front and I'm driving and there's people, there's pedestrians, there's other cars. It's very distracting and it's worrisome to me that I'm going to do something and ultimately it's going to be my fault if I hit someone or a car or something. And the whole time I'm just trying to figure out where this person is and drive at the same time. And you get a similar sense when you're just walking down the sidewalk street as well, where are they coming from? Oh yeah, always. Could, could you describe that, please? It's, I, sometimes I just hear foot, uh, you can just hear footfalls behind me and I just, I just tense all up. It's just, it's waiting, waiting for this whole game to start. What time do you start in the morning? 7.30. Since December? Have you uh, looked forward to coming to work? Not like I used to, no. What's changed, Lynn? What's changed is uh, the anxiety that I feel and the, the horrible anger that I've never, ever felt in my life. How old are you? I'm going to be 57 years old in March. Are you, uh, do you live by yourself? I do. And describe what this anger is all about. Well, I've just never experienced it. It's just, I just get so angry and so frustrated with it. Uh, you know, they don't listen, they don't want to talk, and it just continues. And it's, it's, it's having an effect. I mean, I'm just uh, very tense and uptight all the time, becoming forgetful, and it's just been over this period of time. Have you, um, from your perspective, has there been uh, added strip, significant added stress on the job as a result of the defendant's activities? Yes. Um, if you laugh a little bit, describe that. It's, it's like night and day. It's, it's nothing like I've experienced before. Nothing at all. You've never just experienced that with other citizens, out-of-staters? Not on a continual basis like this. Well, if we were, if we were to get into your shoes and walk those four to six miles every day, Monday through Friday, what would we experience from, from these defendants? If not, Objection. There have been a number of 
um, specific questions that have been asked. And now this is, it seems like it's rehashing everything in one big question. Once again, making no effort to delineate between the individual defendants. And, and I do have, I have that problem to, to the petitions filed against specific individuals. And the question is, is you know, what would you experience from, from these defendants? What would, oh, I'd like it to be more specific, to be helpful for me to understand who, who the witness is referring to. Lynn, if the judge were in your shoes, or if any one of us were in your shoes, Monday through Friday, working for the city of Keene, what would they have? What would they experience? What have they? What would they have experienced from December to the first with regard to um, Garrett Eden? Your Honor, Your Honor, I object to the form of the question. What would somebody else have experienced if they were in your shoes? I mean, at best, that calls for speculation. No, what I'm asking for, Judge, and maybe it was a poorly phrased question. Let me try it again. In your shoes, what have you experienced from uh, Garrett Ian? Uh, the suing, the videotaping, the trying to talk to me, although I've asked him not to talk to me, and he doesn't really um, do that much. Talk to me. Has Garrett Eden, from your perspective, interfered with you and taunted you and harassed you? Just by his actions, yes. What actions? The actions, following me around, preventing me from doing my job, trying to speak to me, you know, this kind of stuff. How, how, what has he done to prevent you from doing your job properly? Just reading. I leave the question. What is the question? I'm sorry. What has Derek Ian done to prevent you from doing your job properly? Um, just being in front of me constantly. And when you say in front of you, are you talking within 30 feet of you? It varies. It could be closer. It could be 30 feet. It could be 50 feet. Can it be 3 feet? 5 feet? at times and from your perspective when the closer um, these defendants are to you does that make any difference to you yes because i don't want them around me i just don't, I don't why why not because i guess their actions just the things they say at times it's like i i i think um, i i just don't trust them i don't want them near me have they caused stress to you on your job? Mm -hmm. And how is that manifested? How does it come out, that stress? Just, just Your Honor, that was asked and answered. I believe you did extensive testimony about it. How about, how about after work? What effect do you feel from the activities that you just described? when you go home from work, what impact has there been? Just very keyed up, very frustrated as to, you know, what, what the point of all this is. Um, a lot of strain, a lot of tension, uh, basically sometimes you just get home and you just sit down and just not want to do nothing. And you just try to think this out all the time. It's just so consuming all the time. It's like day in and day out. It's like I don't want to think about this anymore. I just don't. It's, I just don't understand the reasons for their, why they're doing this. Did you try to tell um, Garrett and Kate and Ian and James and Graham, the five defendants that you've named, to, to please back off and, and stop their conduct? In her objection, the way the question is phrased, you can't tell which person she specifies she has to answer. Sustain. I'll go through each one. Sustain. Have you told, we're talking about Garrett right now, have you told Garrett Ian to back off and leave the loan? Yes, please don't talk to me. And has he done those things? He hasn't backed off. He doesn't really talk to me much, but I don't, 
I don't respond. I don't. I don't engage. Have you tried different techniques to deal with Garrett and uh, Jim Cleveland? No. No. Were you ever talkative to them? No. About Kate now. Let's talk about Kate Ayer. Mm -hmm. What? Uh, what? Her, from your perspective, what taunting, what harassing has she engaged for you? Following behind, making comments, offhand comments now and again. But other than that, that that would be all. Comments such as what? Oh, but like I said, it's been weeks since I've seen her. I don't have them written down. The comments disturb you? Just, yeah, just things about the job, what I'm doing, why do I do this, referring to that kind of thing. Um, has Kate, from your perspective, has Kate indicated to you that you ought not to be doing your job for as a parking enforcement officer, or worse to that effect. Yeah. Yes. Has Garrett Ian said similar things to you that you shouldn't be working for the city parking enforcement work? Yes. Has J James Cleveland said similar things to you about not working for the city? Similar. How about Ian Bernard? How about Mr. Freeman? Mr. How about, Freeman? Yeah, Ian Freeman. Has he said anything to you with if regard? If he has, I don't recall. Okay. Describe. Describe for us what Ian Queen Freeman has done to you, from your perspective, to interfere with your job responsibilities. The same thing, pursuing with the camera, just trying to be intimidating, catching off my guard. I've asked him also not to talk to me and to stay away. His response was, I, I didn't hear you. What about Graham Colson? Describe what Graham Colson has done to you with regard to interfering with your job. Graham has uh, continually chattered and talked. Um, cameras at times, not constantly, or a camp of, uh, recording device at times. Um, The same, the same as all the rest. But more. I'm sorry. He was. I've seen him more than I would say than a Kate or an Ian Freeman. Now you've talked about um, following you. Has there ever been any? Time, have there been times when they're back? Uh, you've been chased. I've not been chased, but sometimes if they come from behind, they'll sweep by very close, especially Mr. Colson to do that. When you say sweep by very close, what Well, come mean? beside me to get in front of me, so they would cut right across, right in front. It's, it's a little startling at times. Coming up from the side or behind you? Behind you, yes, to get in front. Have you ever put your hands up to tell people to stop? Mm-hmm, yeah. You said you verbalized asking people to stop. Yeah. Um, and has, from your perspective, has the taunting and the harassment and the intimidation stopped? From my perspective? Yes. The taunting, I don't hear too much. I, I don't engage. I haven't from the very beginning. And I think that. that that has probably discouraged it, and they don't do that as much. It's, I'm not saying it has stopped altogether, and I always feel like it's a possibility, but the, no, the taunting and the chatting is, has, for me personally, been much wider. Now, with regard to the city sidewalks, have you observed congestion or interference with citizens um, by any of the defendants? when you're trying to do your job? As far as them getting in the way of just somebody walking? No, I don't recall. Have there been any citizens that have come to your assistance or intercepted 
the, any of these defendants on your behalf? There, there are people that have, have said things to them, such as, you know, leave her alone, stop phone her, why are you doing this, or other things. Um, um, either just said it to them and didn't, pers you know, walk after them, and that kind of thing. Say that again? They have people have said things, comments like that to them, but they, they usually say them and then they leave. How about any merchants? Have any merchants come to uh, assist you with regard to what you described? Yes, I have. I've had one or two that try to explain to them, you know, why we do, why they want us to do what we do as far as parking enforcement goes, and they listen, but. They always seem to have a better explanation. And when you're out on the street, if, if there's another parking enforcement officer working, will you try to coordinate with them to try to tell that tell your colleagues, your work colleagues, that any of the individual defendants are in a certain area and that they shouldn't go there? Yeah, we have done that. Yes. Describe that for us, please. Well, I, we have cell phones that we use, and I might call Jane or call Alan and let them know. I mean, it could be, you know, any time during the day, so I have no, no way of knowing. It's just giving them kind of a heads up, that's all. Um, with regard to crossing the street, from your perspective, describe what, if any, safety concerns that you've got, that you have, with regard to motorists, the defendants, yourself? I would use the crosswalks, but well, they, they don't. Well, describe that for us. Just, well, just again, cutting across to where again, excuse me, Sorry. the question is non-specific in terms of which defendants. Ma'am, there's an objection, just stop talking until I've yeah. ruled on, on the objection. The objection sustained. Lynn, describe for us who you have seen following you across the street out of the crosswalk areas. Oh, uh, Graham, Colson, uh, Gary Ian, James Cleveland, Kate Ayer. Uh, Mr. Freeman. Do you have any safety concerns? Copying is not theft. Stealing a thing leaves one less left. Copying it makes one thing more. That's what copying's for. Copying is not theft. If I copy yours, you have it too. One for me and one for you, that's what copies can do. If I steal your bicycle, you have to take the bus. But if I just copy it, there's one for each of us. Making more of a thing, that is what we call copying. Sharing ideas with everyone, that's why copying is fun.